Hello everybody and welcome to Flock Talk. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about the problems you can have when using high value treats in training. This is a topic I talked a little bit about in the harness training video where I said that we needed to be using lower value treats when working with the harness. So I wanted to dive into that a lot deeper today and explain why it can be detrimental to use high value treats sometimes. For starters, what is a high value treat? Well, it is whatever your bird considers to be extremely valuable. For most birds, this is extremely fatty seeds or nuts such as your walnuts and your sunflower seeds. These are the items that your bird would pick over everything else. This is giving them the highest value of payment that you can for a designated behavior. This is in comparison to your low or mid value treats, which would be things that are not as valuable to your bird, things that are a lower pay. This would be millet or some pellets that maybe they don't get as often. Anything that your bird doesn't like quite as much, but is still good to them, it is still going to reinforce the experience for them. For a human comparison, a low value reinforcer might be getting paid a couple of cents for an hour's worth of work in comparison to a $100 bill. That would be significantly more valuable to you and something that you would want a lot more. Typically, you can determine what is a high value treat to your bird by presenting them a bowl or a couple of bowls with different food items in them. Whichever thing they tend to eat first or eat the most of is whatever they determine to be the highest of value. And then whatever they eat last will be the thing that is the lowest value for that bird. Now, high and low value treats have a lot of purpose in training. They can help you create very, very clear communication when you are trying to train a new behavior. You can use low value treats to reward the attempts that are not quite where you would like them to be, but are still worth payment. And then you have your high value treats, which you can deliver if the bird happens to hit the nail on the head with what you wanted them to do, or makes a really big step towards that end goal. By using that high value reinforcer in those moments, it helps the bird realize that what they just did was extremely valuable and extremely worthwhile, and it makes it more likely that they will repeat that behavior again. For that reason, utilizing high and low value reinforcers in training can be super valuable and help the training process move along a lot faster. So if it is so great and so valuable, why does it have bad side effects? Well, the reason for that is that we do not get to decide what is aversive, the learner does. So in this case, our bird is the one that gets to decide what is reinforcing and what is aversive. And high value treats have one little caveat in them and that is that they can be coercive. Even if we believe that we are reinforcing a situation and that we aren't being negative or mean, that doesn't mean that we aren't accidentally coercing our birds into doing something that they find aversive and unpleasant. And that can cause the situation to not be reinforcing at all. The most common way that we will see this happen is when we are trying to treat fear in birds or any animal that we are working with. When we are trying to desensitize an animal to something that scares them, if we are using a really high value reinforcer, it can actually hide the fear that they are feeling, even though they are still experiencing that fear. And as a result, we aren't able to make any progress and they just end up feeling scared every single time we do it. And it can cause them to actually regress as we just make them go through that fear over and over and over again. But to us, it can look like it's fine because they're still conquering that fear to us. They're still going towards the thing that's scary for the sake of getting that high value reward. To put this in perspective, if you had an intense phobia of bridges per se, a suspension bridge that's a little bit wobbly, you are mortified of passing over it. If I were to put $2 million on the other side of the bridge and say, if you can walk across it, you can have it, you might do it depending on the severity of your phobia. There is a very real chance that you would cross that bridge for that money. Does that mean that the next time you see a bridge, you would be happy to go across it? No, the odds of that are extremely unlikely. You will have suppressed that fear and that discomfort and that innate panic for the sake of getting that extremely high value reinforcer, that $2 million on the other side of that bridge. And that is exactly what a high value treat will do to your bird. It will cause them to still be experiencing that fear the entire time they're crossing that bridge. 
but they get the reward at the end, and it doesn't actually resolve that fear at all, because every time they went through and got that $2 million or got their huge hunk of walnut, they were terrified. So when we think we are reinforcing the fact that they walked across it, what is actually happening is we are reinforcing the fact that they felt scared, because every time they went over it, they felt more fear. Every time they crossed over that bridge, they still experienced fear. So in their mind, that bridge is still scary, it still caused them to feel scared, it was still a horrifying experience, they don't want to be doing it. They are suppressing those feelings for the sake of getting that reward. And over time, the amount of fear that they've experienced passing over that bridge over and over and over again can cause them to get worse. And this is where you will run into situations where you might be working with your bird, feeling like you're making progress, they're facing their fear, and then all of a sudden it seems like you need something that is higher and higher and higher value every single time you work on it, because the old tree just isn't working anymore. That is the fear expanding and getting worse because it isn't resolving the root of the problem. As an alternative, if you have that immense phobia of a bridge and I am using pennies to reward you for interacting with it, and I say walk across the bridge and you get a penny, you are very likely to say heck no and stop dead in your tracks and go nowhere near it. And this might sound like a bad thing, right? Because you're not going over it, you're not facing your fear. However, it gives me a very clear boundary for where your comfort level is. If I have the low value reinforcer, maybe it's a cookie or something for you, maybe you love cookies, and that's something I can offer you in exchange for trying to conquer your fear, what's gonna happen is you're gonna tell me very clearly where your comfort is, and I am able to work with that. When we are pushing past those comfort boundaries and those thresholds, the brain is locked in a state of fight or flight. They are in panic mode where the nervous system is just a complete wreck and learning in the capacity to make new neural connections is kind of shut down. The only connections you're able to make if you are over that threshold of fear is that you are experiencing more fear, it is scary, and that is locking in place and telling you for future repetitions that that was scary every time you encountered it. If we work under threshold where we're staying off of the bridge and I'm giving you a low value treat so it's really easy for you to say no, then it's really easy for you to look at that bridge, go, okay, I'll take a penny for standing on the side of this bridge and looking at it. And you're able to learn and you're able to feel more positive experiences around the bridge from standing outside of it and staying underneath your threshold. Over time, you will find that by staying under threshold and just pairing that bridge with positive experiences without fear having to be a present part of that, you will be participating in what is called classical conditioning, where the brain is making these connections and going, I'm hanging out around this bridge, I'm not feeling scared, I'm getting a couple cents here and there, I'm benefiting from it, I'm having a good time. And over time, that fear starts to deplete as you have more and more positive experiences surrounding that bridge as a whole. This exact same concept applies to birds, where you work on those fears underneath their threshold with a low value treat that is easy to say no to. This way you can very clearly see where their comfort lies and you can work beneath that level until they are comfortable enough to progress closer towards that fear. Remember, the brain has to not be experiencing fear in order to be able to understand that the thing in front of them isn't scary. If they are constantly scared whenever you are putting them near the thing that terrifies them, you're just going to be showing them that it is in fact scary because they are feeling scared. Even if they are still taking treats, they might just be suppressing how scared they are for the sake of getting that $2 million in that giant walnut. Using low value treats in these situations give us a very clear picture of how the bird is feeling and how we can work on it. With the high value treats, it is hiding their symptoms of their fear for the sake of getting the thing that they really, really want while they are still feeling terrified. The low value treats allow us to see them being scared and back off and give them the space to be able to feel comfortable. In order for positive associations to be made, that terrifying levels of fear can't be present. And those low value treats give us the opportunity to be able to know where that threshold is. You can still use high value treats. It's just important to make sure that the low value ones are there to monitor how they are feeling. If you put a low value treat near the thing that they're scared of and they don't go for it, but you put the walnut down and they do, that doesn't mean they're more comfortable. 
That means that they are suppressing the way that they feel for the sake of earning that reward, and they're just remembering that it was still terrifying the last time they approached it. Taking the time to use those low value treats, slow things down and work underneath our bird's threshold sets them up for the capacity to learn and make new positive associations with the things that they previously found scary. That will do it for me today. I hope you guys learned something new from this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.